status still adding or editing or uh, deleting or revising. So you, it's absolutely crucial for the Coursera focal point to change the status to ready so that ICAO knows that this information is indeed complete uh, for ICAO's uh, for review. So I'll, I, once uh, ICAO receives a ready information, I, ICAO will check the format correctness of the ready status ear record. If it's, um, and if there is an error, obviously, we'll get back to the Corsia focal point, change the status back to in progress, so that um, the state user and ICAO uh, uh, Corsia focal point will receive an email notification that, you know, there's something wrong with the, with the data or whatnot that you have to sort of review again. Um, if it is free from such um, uh, format error, then ICAO will lock the information, um, lock the ear record for compilation, and to uh, to publish um, I, to use that data to publish ICAO Coursera document, as Stelios uh, previously uh, presented. In this case, um, obviously, it will be the CO2 emissions information for baseline set and baseline setting. So, as Stelios mentioned, uh, once the 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 year uh, record is used for calculation won't be um, even if it is unlocked um, and revised well, ICAO will not use a new information to recalculate the, the baseline. It's really important for uh, for states to to uh, to be absolutely sure of the information and change the status to ready um, and you know be, make it sure that uh, the, the calculation and everything is, uh, is indeed correct. Um, sorry, I'm having another technical issues. I cannot see any chat functions or anything like that right now, somehow. Um, okay. So, uh, sorry for, for the delay. So, um, this whole process is further explained in the CCR Quick Guide series Leaflet D, uh, which was sent to you last week. Um, this leaflet is intended to provide a very, very concise step-by-step -step guide, as, uh, as well as like reporting tips on what you should remember um, and uh, how to uh, report the CO2 emissions. So this will be quite handy for you later, um, this, later this year when you prepare to submit CO2 emissions data to ICAO by the end of this uh, August on your own. So um, as Delius mentioned, if you have any sort of feedback on this document, feel free to reach out to us um, by, by chat or uh, with uh, email as, as well. So, Finally, we'll do the live demo, um, uh, and and before that, I will use the the site a bit more, I think, but uh, I will mostly use the CCR uh, to show you how um, the CO2 emissions can be actually uh, reported. So um, the first step is to obviously create the year record. So let's see how it looks like in the actual CCR. Um, All right, so um, as you can see here on this left-hand side, I'm a ICAO state user. Uh, no, uh, ICAO um, state Nauru, and my role is Corsia focal point. So for this um, demonstration purposes, I'm a I'm a Corsia focal point from Nauru. So and I want to report a CO2 emissions for 2019. What I need to do is check report CO2 emissions on the navigation panel and click it. Then you will go to a, a report CO2 emissions list section and you can add a year. So for Nauru reporting year of 2019. 
and create. You can create and continue if you want to uh, create a multiple year records, but for the purpose, uh, you would only do it, you know, once a year. So it, for for this purposes, let's just create only one year record. So now the year record for Nauru of 2019 is created. And as mentioned earlier, one you, once you create a new year record, it is automatically as in progress data status. Um, you can now um, once when you open a year record, you will see you can sort of access the year record by clicking the edit or pencil icon. And in that pencil icon, you will see different tabs like um, how Stelius showed you before. You'll see uh, the, uh, the first one is detail tab. So here you see reporting year, now which you cannot change obviously, and then the total CO2 emissions. For now, because it's a new year record, there's no data whatsoever. So the total CO2 emissions is set to zero. But this will automatically change if you include um, the, the CO2 emissions um, in, the, in the other tab. Now the data stays, as, as mentioned, is in progress and you, you will change it later when you are sure that you know, all the information is complete and whatnot and then uh, ready for ICAO's review. But this only happens after you have uploaded every information uh, as, uh, as needed. So in the second tab, there is CO2 emissions by state pair, meaning you can add different uh, CO2 emissions by from which state to which state um, and how much ton of CO2 was emitted in that specific pair for all the airplane operators attributed to your state. So it's not just on one specific air, uh, air, air, airplane operator, but the aggregated um, state pair. Um, the third tab is about CO2 emissions by airplane operators. For 2019 and 20, this tab is sort of this, uh, inactive, meaning because, because you're not supposed to uh, report to ICAO by airplane operators for 2019 and 20, this whole tab you don't need to worry about. This will only come in to, uh, to, uh, from 2021. The last tab is, like before, it's a data journal. Um, to track every sort of movement or record or, or any action within the CCR. So because I created a new year record, now it has all this um, data journal that shows what type of action has been done. So if you in, if you input more uh, state pair information, for example, here, then you will see that such an action will be recorded in the journal. So let us actually um, sort of, you know, test try adding a, uh, ear, um, a CO2 emissions um, record. So, so for now, let's say you want to uh, sort of uh, add from Nauru to Canada and aggregated CO2 emissions from that pair, say from Nauru to Canada, operated by an by airplane operators attribute to your state, let's say it was 400, um, then you can create and, and you can also sort of list whether this data is confidential or not. And that confidential or not is should be sort of reflected in the emissions report when the airplane operators submit to you. So say there's only one airplane operator that is operating that specific state pair, then because we can sort of locate by having this information we can locate the specific airplane operator Op airplane operator may may uh, request this to state to say that this is confidential data if it's confidential data ICAO will consider that um, and it will not publish it um, as 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 um, as a data that can be attributed to a specific airplane operator so say this is a confidential data and then you create it then you'll see in the uh, here um, a new record has been or new uh, new row has been added. So from Nauru to Canada, 400 
CO2, uh, tons of CO2 emission uh, was happened for 2019, for example. So, and um, offloading requirement, again, for 2019 and 2020, this is not something that you need to worry about or consider. And that's why it is not applicable because it's not subject to, like, it, this is irrelevant information. This will be relevant, obviously, uh, later in 2021 and onwards. But for the baseline setting years, this is just not applicable. And because we said it is indeed a confidential data, you will see that it is true for confidential data. Let's add another sort of row. So from since we had a pair that, that, that started from Nauru to Canada, let's create another one that starts from Canada and back to Nauru. And say, this was 420.05 tons of CO2. And again, this is confidential as well. And create. So you'll notice here that actually you can um, upload the CO2 emissions or specify the CO2 emissions to the two decimal point. Um, so if you put more, it won't, uh, the CCR unfortunately will not uh, recognize it. Um, it will just um, uh, keep it to the two, uh, two decimal points. So now you have two sort of rows and this, the total will be, you will uh, see the total automatically sort of calculated for total CO2 emissions um, here. You don't have to worry about like calculating all the by, by state pairs and whatnot um, because CCR will do it uh, automatically for you. So, um, and uh, say for here, there's only two sort of uh, rows, but if you want to add more state pairs and it's it's quite cumbersome to click report CO2 emissions and then click the year uh, 2019, edit it, and then you know come to this tab if you think it's a bit too cumbersome, you can um, easily sort of access it here using again the my favorite um, and add uh, 2019 for example CO2 now rule save. Oh. I think there's something there was something wrong. Um, save. Then if you go to the main home, hmm. uh, okay, main homepage, we'll see that there is actually two um, of my favorites that is created. So uh, if you click any one of those, then you will go directly to this, um, this section. Um, so I received an, uh, a question through chat. So for example, 400 tons of CO2 by state pair would be the total of tons in the corresponding year. So I think uh, if I understand correctly, um, it depends. So if you have multiple rows, say you have now to Canada, now to Fiji, now to Korea, now to Russia, etc., 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 there are like multiple rows of CO2 emissions. For that specific pair, the total CO2 emissions that is available in the details tab will be the comp the um, aggregate of all those pairs. I'm not really sure if I under uh, if I. I sort of answered your question. So if uh, if I misunderstood your question, then please. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Right. It's working well. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but now you'll sort of like see that, but there are so many, you know, different sort of state pairs that can be feasible here. We have 193 uh, KO states. And, you know, if you think about it, there's just so many different combinations. So, the easy way to do so is actually using a CSV file that uh, Stelius mentioned. So you can just import an Excel sheet or Excel file um, and um, CCR will automatically import those data. So um, the way to do it is click tools and import CSV file. And then you have to sort of locate where that CSV file is and how it looks like. There will be a template available uh, because each CSV file uh, for airplane operator and verification body and CO2 emissions and whatnot will be different. 
but um, this um, will be available to you. So I'm showing you an example of how uh, a CSV file would look like. So say, this is the template. So it's very, very simple. There's only four types of information that we would need for this. So from, from which state to which state and what's the total CO2 emissions uh, in tons and then whether it is confidential or not. That's all we need to upload or import to CCR. So let's, uh, so you see there are six different rows um, all sort of spread out everywhere. Uh, and let's see how CCR sort of imports this CSV file. So you choose the file from the system. Now I have it here ready. So say this one and then upload. Then CCR will check the format and automatically know. So um, here for this, you don't have to provide this information. It does, uh, CCR does it for uh, automatically. So, you know, just to show as, as Stelius mentioned in the earlier segment, uh, this is for Nauru for 2019 year record and uh, in progress, you know, because, because this is CO2 emissions and it's pretty obvious, you know. Um, so from Tuvalu, uh, I will just show you here. So from Tuvalu to Rus uh, Russian Federation and the CO2 emission is uh, 6654, uh, 5, 6, sorry. And tons and then confidential data falls. So all the rows here has been, you know, included here. And if you are sure that, you know, this is, you know, correct, then you click confirm and continue import. Then data import will be progressed in the system and will be available in the list um, that you've seen before. So return, oh, so data import is success, uh, done successfully. Return to the page. Then, uh, yeah, so you will see here that there are multiple, now there were originally only two rows available. Now you have uh, six additional rows. And again, you know, already the total CO2 emission is dauntingly complex. You don't have to worry about it. Again, if you go back to the details tab, it, uh, CCR will do it automatically for you. Oh, so um, I see another question on the chat. So can I repeat the criteria about confidential data? So this should be already um, flagged by the airplane operator. So you, necessary, you don't necessarily need to worry about it. Um, the airplane operator uh, in their emissions report, they will sort of flag the routes that they are, uh, they think it's confidential for commercial purposes it, um, because they don't want to be sort of identified for that specific pair. So if if there are such case, say there is only one airplane operator that is operating that specific route um, in the whole wide world, so everyone will know that's that airplane operator, then they will request the state to you know make that data confidential. So um, that's it. Um, and another question um, from uh, Jill, actually, I will give that example um, right away. So if you add a, a state by row, you won't have a mistake because you have to choose from the drop-down menu. But in case you have to um, import a file and have some mistakes in the state name, so say uh, we are importing a different CSV file, and um, state name has an error in it. So, oh, let me show you how the state name file actually looks like. Um, not this file, but this file. So here um, you'll see that there is you know, only Italy, Spain, Comoros, and Korea. But um, indeed, I'm, I'm from Korea, and indeed there are two Koreas in the world, and uh, the correct name for intended here was Republic of Korea. So in case a, you know, the CSV file only has Korea in it, you may see it here, and it will actually flag as in, there's one new tools that CCR doesn't recognize. So it seems a bit weird, 
um, for now, but let's, um, um, so CCR cannot sort of import the file because there's something that is wrong. It shows there's one new tools and, you know, please review the, the information data below. You could, you would know the more in detail if you click here and it says new to records found as Korea. So you would know exactly uh, what was the error. Um, please note that the, the message here is a bit counterintuitive. So we are currently revising uh, in the actual CCR, not the training version of the CCR, but in the actual CCR, we're trying to make it more user friendly. So the error message here may not be, you know, like this, but it will show to you that the state name or two information or whatever is a bit weird to you. So you cannot even import it um, because you, you have to, you know, there's no other option other than that. So you have to go back to your CSV file, make it uh, back to Republic of Korea, for example, save the CSV file and uh, import it back. So let's actually do that. So again, import the CSV file. It was a uh, so state name upload. Then now you see the new name, Republic of Korea is there. So you can again confirm and continue importing because there's no error in the in the file. So that has import is in progress. You will go back to where you were, the list of all the different rows uh, here or different state pairs, and you will um, see that there is a new additional. Since it's there is more total record is 11, you have to go to the second page or the other way to do around it is say, make it, you know, page size of 50. Because uh, if you have a airplane operators that operated a globally really sort of you know, big um, airlines and uh, attribute to your state, you will have so many different rows. So this uh, function may come handy uh, unless you want to, you know, check different uh, pages. So now you have 11 different rows here. Again, if you go back to the details tab, you will see the total automatically calculated for you. Um, another question from Max, um, the state name has to be in English. Um, there's uh, there's no function within CCR to, because as even for, you know, for example, between Korea to Republic of Korea, CCR doesn't recognize Korea. It has to be in, in Korean, uh, in, in English or in, only, sorry. Um, or if you don't want to have that mistake, you can sort of check the drop down menu and then and then click from there. Um, but uh, right now, CCR is only sort of, you know, functioning in English basis. Thanks for the question. Um, let's try another sort of type of error. So say you have, um, made a mistake and in this in the csv file you have um, you uh, sort of by mistake included a domestic pair so say here um, you see the the row four has canada to canada so this information uh, this may be by mistake be reported by the open operator but it's not an in international route. It's not subject to Corsia. It's not supposed to be there. So at the moment, what CCR does is if there is such, a, there's a business rules to prevent different types of errors and whatnot. So uh, at the moment in the training version of the CCR, um, it imports uh, only the international routes. It just completely disregard uh, domestic route. So let, let me show you how it does. Um, it thinks that you have made a mistake and, and uh, you shouldn't have sort of included domestic pairs. So it only includes the uh, international route pairs here. But um, when we sort of present it to, uh, to, to the uh, trainers uh, or trainers of the uh, trainers for the uh, ICAO Corsia Buddy Partnership, um, we got the feedback that it may be, uh, you know, may not have been the 
to uh, the mistake to include the domestic pair, but actually um, was not Canada, but just uh, you know Excel Excel error or something. So um, given that feedback, we have requested the developers to you know have an error message, not you know import it like this uh, automatically. You know having a 13 um, counts only rather than 14, um, not do that, but have an error message that says you know there's a domestic. Uh, you know, pair here included in the file, please check or things like that. So that uh, it is um, clear for the Corsia focal points to know that there was an actually an indeed an error in the file. So it's uh, it operates like this in the training version, but in the actual CCR version, we'll see an error message that says, you know, domestic pair included or something like that. Um, uh, so that's this this is how another type of error can be included uh, i have another question from um from the audience um can you demonstrate the use of the query function i'm not really sure if i f understood the question um to be honest are you talking about um uh, are you talking about the question here so say if you have any question about the co2 emissions reporting you can access the question, um, some of the help functions here already implement, uh, implemented. So you can check different summaries or properties and things like that through, from here. Um, if that was not your question, I'm sorry for that. Uh, if you can sort of uh, rephrase the question, I'll, I'll try to answer it. Not uh, one of the organizer will help you to answer the question. Um, another type of error that, that I thought was in, sort of you know in, interesting was that uh, what about zero emissions? So say you have a mis have made a mistake in the CSV file because it's gonna be really big file. Um, say you have this uh, in your CSV file. So there was one row, say say for example, had zero CO2 emissions in it, um, and you didn't notice it because the file was so big, and you try to re um, you try to import this uh, file into the CCR. What happens is, let me actually show you what happens here. So let's import that zero emissions file here. Then it will show you like this. So basically just show you the file that, or show you the information or data that you wanted to import. And then you click confirm and continue. Before you didn't have any error message because it just you know either imported um, you know without any issues it just said, said like importing successful or something like that. Now because there was a, an error in row number five that value was blank uh, or duplicate or validation failed. Meaning in this case the value was blank, right? In the row five here the fifth uh, row not the header um there was an error that had value was blank or it could be negative you know you could put you could put like minus five tons which is not feasible so the, the same type of error message will be popped up you cannot put that um sort of um number there in the csv file so it will be it will, it will if you go back to um, to the CO2 emissions, you'll see that only row five is not imported, but all the other rows that has correct information is already there. It will be already there. So you know you know for a fact that you know it's it's already sort of covers uh, all the rows that you wanted to import, but and that doesn't have any errors in it. Another test we can do is to see if you can say import another the same pairs, exactly the same pairs, but with say different CO2 emissions um, or or you know just same pair information say say. So if you remember the first file that we have imported, the correct file, it uh, it read like it read like this. So we had Tuvalu to Russia, Russia to France, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this was the correct file that we had. There's no nothing wrong with this file. But if you try to re-import this file, you know you already have this pair listed here. So from Tuvalu to Russia, Russia to France, France to Uganda, etc. So 
C, um, CCR will sort of flag it that there's, you know, that there's a duplicate. So, you know, you shouldn't do that basically. So let's see how, let me show you the error message. So this is a correct file that we have um, imported at the beginning. And let's see if you try to re-import the same file, then, you know, it will read as is and then try to import it. And then we'll show you an error message that says, again, this pair combination already exists for the reporting period. Obviously, if you do it for 2020, because it's a different year, uh, we'll, we'll not have such an error message. But for 2019, you have already included that specific state pair, so you cannot um, re-import that. You have to go back to the CO2 emissions um, here, page, and say, oh yeah, so one airplane operator, I thought it was just one airplane operator that uh, operates that specific route, but indeed there were two. So I have to, for example, for Tuvalu to Russian Federation, it was not 66, uh, 6,656, but indeed it was, say, 12,006. So this was, you know, the case. Then you can edit it by, again, clicking it and then just editing the, the information there. You can also edit whether this information was confidential or not um, by just clicking, checking or not checking, and then save. So you'll you'll see the the corresponding row. Um, to well to Russian Federation has been updated and obviously if you go back to the detail function it will show an updated list of um, uh, updated list of um, or updated aggregated uh, aggregated total of CO2 emissions um, for that specific year. Um, you can as I've showed you before you can edit it by editing uh, different year or different pairs by clicking the edit button here. Or you can do, if you want to sort of change in bulk, say, uh, I don't particularly recommend this because you may uh, be able, uh, you may make a lot of mistake by just sort of like trying to editing multiple uh, rows. But in case you, you know, say you flag well, to Russian Federation route uh, as confidential, uh, not confidential, but you realize that there's only two airplane operators and you want to make it confidential, then you can do it by clicking the route repair and bulk update. So there's obviously a warning sign that says, you know, you like better not do that, but you can sort of do it by uh, updating the confidential data information. So, which before was false, should be true now. Yeah, so you see that the confidential data sort of status has been changed because you have made such a change. But again, if you think this was not the, what you intended, you can revert back by clicking, you know, confidential status here and just save. Um, another thing that you can do when you create the year record. So for 2019, because it's the first time that you do it on the CCR, you will have to do it, you know, using a CSV file or manually in, import, creating it different lines. However, for 2020, say there's no change in the state pair information. Your, uh, your urban operators um, operate the exactly same route. The emissions may vary but uh, the, the root information hasn't changed it. What you can do is copy from a 2019 year record and uh, put it for 2020, for example. So say you want to copy from 2019 year record and make it to 2020 and create it. What the CCR shows is that it doesn't copy the CO2 emissions information, but only the state pair information. What I mean by that is to to from information will be, or from to to information um, will be copied, but the rest won't. 
So let's see. We had about, I think, 13 or, you know, whatever um, year uh, say pairs in that specific year record. So let's see if in 2020, the same year record um, or same state pairs are available in 2020. Um, unfortunately, CCR is somehow, you know, having some issues, I think, because of my internet. Um, okay, so yeah, voila. So you see the total CO2 emission is just zero because you haven't included any, you know, any of that uh, CO2 emissions data. But if you go here, you will see a, a small number here that says 17 because you already have 17 state pairs in 2019 year record. So if you access it there, then you will see that, um, you know, these information is already available. Um, notice that subject to offsetting requirement, it's uh, listed as no. Um, this again is another error that we picked up. So this only happens in the training version, hopefully, and in the actual CCR, we'll just say not applicable as, as before. So it will be like NA rather than no. Um, you have to, again, change edit the CO2 emissions uh, information by clicking, you know, individual year, uh, individual state pair lines and uh, change, say, 600.5 um, and save. Again, this function is uh, great for 2020 and onwards, I think, but for 2019 CO2 emissions reporting specifically, since there is no year record that has been published, there's not much of a sort of like need, but uh, it's something for you to consider um, for, you know, for future. So let's go back to 2019 year record. and say we go to the data journal and see what you know as you see here you will there's like different functions that you've done so even like viewing specific co2 emissions report will be sort of tracked here um i think if you go to specific state pair information so say this one now we're to canada um there is journal for specific that entry as well and in that journal you have um so this has been added and then modified and then viewed so etc cetera, etc cetera. so for this specific pair uh state pair i don't think i have done a lot of sort of like a meandering but meandering but uh, let's say cancel and go back and see i think was uh, the russian uh, route the third one that i have changed it. so let's see if that change has been recorded there So Tuvalu Russian Federation. This one was previously six thousand something. Um, so you see it here. So modified, modified, again modified, viewed, modified, modified, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So every action that you take about specific any any action basically will be recorded somewhere. So so that we can track and if there's an error, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, we we know what happened at what time by whom. So for example here. You know this record the last update um, that i've made as a test user ccr um you know when that action was done and when this sort of pair information was created this is all available here in the same sort of like uh, um sheet so um i think this is pretty much it uh it, the last one that i wanted to again highlight to you was uh changing the status so of the year record so say 2019 i'm let's assume that you know you're 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 you know 100 percent sure that um this information here is correct there is no other state pair that you will need to report this is all the state pair that is available and the co2 emissions is correct and you've done sort of checking in uh the total aggregate with the the based on the emissions report that you have received from the open operators and you you know you're you're 100 sure um say you're a state user right now i'm a course a focal point 
but let's say you're a state user, you can, you can change, you know, the status into complete to make sure, you know, to show to, or to, uh, to present to the course of focal point that I've done my work, you know, this, this whole year record and whatnot is complete. Um, so complete for your review, basically. So if you save that, then the data status, uh, which used to be in progress as default, um, changes to complete. You see that the data status has changed and say, as a, because I'm a course of focal point, I can change to uh, complete, but also I can, I can report to ICAO. So I say as a course of focal point, you come back to this page and with a fresh mind, you kind of review all the state pairs and check uh, and vis-a-vis and -vis the emissions report from airplane operators attributed to your state. And you're hundred percent sure that this is the right information and you need, you want to report to ICAO by the end of August this year. Then what you do is change the data states from complete to ready. You notice that uh, there was another status that was lock, right? But lock was only for ICAO. Uh, for, for ICAO to receive a ready uh, year record and then review it. And if it's, you know, it's complete, uh, if the, uh, the format is correct and whatnot, then they lock it, right? So for, of course, your focal point perspective, there's only three sort of uh, data status that you can set. Um, you have to be super careful to um, uh, to change the status to ready between in progress and complete course focal point has absolute control over it however if you change it to ready unless you request a service request you cannot um you know release the ready uh, status uh, information back to complete or in progress so you have to be careful but you know, I'm 100% I'm sure that this is my record, so I'm submitting to ICAO by clicking it ready and save. So, so again, you get a notification that says, are you 100% sure? Are you sure you want to do this? Because if you make it ready, you will, this year record again, as said, will be ear read, read only and uh, ICAO super user will get an automated message that says, you know, um, a record has been submitted. This is for your review. If you review it and then you lock it. So this, it's absolutely important for you to do this, but uh, with the caveat that you should be sure to do that. You should have checked everything and, and be, you know, uh, sure that, you know, all the information that is, that are ready for ICAO's review. So, um, you see that the action here, uh, the icon has changed it from pencil icon to eye icon because you can only read it. Um, I know that it says edit on the right hand side. It's another error that we have picked up. Um, again, in the actual CCR version, hopefully it won't show. It just shows read only or read. But, uh, but uh, at least you will see if you click it, uh, you won't be able to edit it. It's, um, it's, it's ready information, so this record is read only and no change can be made. You, you cannot do anything from here. The only way around is for you to do the service request, which, we, uh, which I will present uh, in the later session. So, so far, this I think is all uh, what I wanted to show to you regarding this um, CO2 emissions reporting. Um, we have, as I said in the earlier session, we have sent a exercise sheet to you in the PDF format. Um, unfortunately, right now, the, uh, the training version of CCR is having some difficulty because we are sort of updating a lot. Um, so the CSV importing function may not work for everyone at this stage. So I haven't shared the CSV file uh, for that purpose. We will share it later when the CCR, you know, um, comes back to normal. It, it worked completely fine until a few days ago and somehow it sort of, we had uh, some difficulty. So the developers are working hard to, you know, reinstate it. But um, so far, uh, the CSV file importing function may not work. So the homework that we have listed in the PDF file um, that is here, uh, let me just show you. So you'll see that we have asked you to do a 
in session exercise and as well as a homework. Unfortunately, because CSV file importing function is not working properly for certain states, we are not going to share you this CSV file, but we'll only share it once uh, once the, the CCR is back to normal. Um, for now, this manual entry works just fine. So what I want you to do um, for the remaining time, um, Sorry, I wasn't supposed to go this much um, on, or spend this much time on, C, uh, on showing you this. But if you sort of check the CCR leaflet D especially and um, try to follow create a new year record to report CO2 emissions for year 2019 for your state. Um, again, you have to be the course of focal point to create a year record. Um, so in, in case there are multiple participants from a, one state, you may be a state user and you may not have the option to create a new year record. Um, but wait. We should uh, just wait for a minute until uh, June comes back. Uh, her computer had some failures. Um, she's coming back in, in a short time. Thanks. Maybe I can take over while um, Ji Yun is uh, restarting her computer or uh, logging in again. Um, the idea of this exercise, as uh, Ji Yun was trying to explain, is uh, basically for you to use a leaflet and also use this information to create a new year record for 2019. Then select the year records and enter this information. What we have left blank is uh, from you to select you know, your state, uh, you know, whatever state you are uh, the Focosia focal point or the state user for, and then add the information that you have on the screen. Um, and this can go manually. So it's going to be state per by state per by state per, not using uh, the CSV file um, approach. And um, we have uh, basically four uh, year records uh, for you in, um, in in the Word file that we provided. I think actually with PDF what I provide to you. And so we will give you 15 minutes to go through that. Of course, we will be here. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send us, um, you know, a chat message, and we'll try to help you in any which way we can. I hope this is clear. Uh, but again, any questions you have, we are here to help. So 15 minutes for that. Sorry, everyone. Um, I wonder if you can hear me now. Um, my computer shut down uh, in the middle, so I, I sort of lost con um, connection to everything. Um, I believe that everyone is doing the exercise now. So in case you uh, encounter any issues with the exercise, please uh, leave your comments or questions in the chat. Uh, we'll try to address it as soon as possible. Uh, this is Phyllis again. I believe that some of you have problems with the CCR. I saw a message about the CCR not working. Um, if you want to be a bit more specific in relation to what is not uh, working, has it frozen or is it something else that's a problem, let us know and um, we will you know, try to fix it. Again, this is a training version of the CCR, it's not the real thing and there is a lot of work is happening in the background while we are, we are doing this work. So some of its features may be a little bit erratic. Uh, but again, please let us know what the problem is uh, specifically, and we will try to fix it if we can. Um, you know, in, in the next you know few minutes we have uh, for this uh, for this uh, segment. Also, I sent again to those of you that said you don't have not received the exercise. I sent by email. Um, maybe the email has gone to your spam folder. But in any case, what we're going to do is we are going to resend again. Um, after this session to all of you one more time and you can do this exercise those of you that were not able to do it um, uh, to the uh, while you know we are in this uh, training mode you can do it as a homework and again if you're not successful if you have problems let us know and we can you know help you um, remotely you can have like a, a tutoring session if you like 
and we can do it together. Um, I see another comment, unable to input information in the from and to city per column. Actually, in the from and to, you select from a drop-down list. You do not enter information there in these states. It's not city pairs. That's very important to remember. So basically, from um, as you can see on the screen right now, I think Ji Yun is demonstrating this. So I'll give the floor to Ji Yun to answer this. Sure. Um, thank you, Stelios. Sorry again for the, uh, the technical difficulties here. Um, so the CO2 emissions, as Stelius mentioned, you should be able to add it um, online. The drop-down list doesn't work. Okay. Um, so can um, can you? So if you click so from here, select, you don't see any list like this. You could search. Um, here as well, as I did say, for example, if you want to put Nauru, you can, you know, drag down to, uh, you know, where the end pops up. But another thing you can do is just search, say, Nauru and click based on that. Um, but if the drop down menu doesn't work, does that is it because the internet um, is a bit too slow or so you can you can enter this page is that correct so if you click from or to um, you should be able if the CCR works just fine, you should be able to see a list here and search um, based on you know where you want to put. So again, for example, for Canada, you can put uh, Canada may not be that right uh, here. Um, say you want to put friends, then you can put friends here and then click from the list that was available, and then put uh, inter um, the CO2 emissions information there, and then create the row. So I believe in the exercise there were four uh, rows or four pairs that we asked you to input. Um, there is another question. So will the CCR will show graphics of some sort of a data uploaded by each state that can be seen only by the state in their accounts? Um, it's an interesting question. I don't think we have had a uh, sort of discussion on showing graphics of the data. Um, when you say graphics, are you referring to the state pair information, say on the map, or we, what we have here uh, right now will be, you know, if you go to the home page, you see the a total sort of year record, the summary, and if you go to say a specific year record, right now it, there's only one year record for verification bodies, and it may not be full, uh, but if you have like after have you have inputted all the information there will be a list of verification bodies available etc but i don't think it's a type of information that you know can be converted to a graphic um so if you could sort of clarify your question uh, i would really appreciate it um for as i think for airplane body operators and verification bodies it's more about their sort of names attributions etc so yeah Maybe I can I can say something about this in relation to graphics. The um, the tool that has been used to create the CCR, what you see on your screen, has the option to provide some kind of graphical information. Discuss this with a developer. It is not in our immediate plans to include you know graphical representation of data. And as Ji, you're saying there's a lot of information which doesn't lend itself uh, to graphing, uh, but maybe CO2 emissions would be an area that we could look into how we present the information in, in, a, in a graphical way in a future version of the CCR, not, not for the one that you will see uh, in a few weeks from now. Uh, but for the future, we're going to see how we can uh, activate this feature. Um, but again, um, it, it, we'll discuss more with the developer and see what is feasible, uh, the, the funds you have available and everything else. But more on this later. Thank you, Sirius. Um, 
so so far if there is no additional question uh, in the interest of time sorry for for that uh, i think it's better if we sort of quickly go over the service request presentation um knowing that we have already sort of you know gone over uh, the allocated time so uh, let me present these uh, the last but not least uh, final presentation slide on service request So, uh, okay, so finally, again, uh, this is the last presentation for today, and it is about submitting um, a service request in CCR. For interest of time, I'm going to go over the presentation slide rather than through clicking in the in the CCR because it takes some time for because of due to uh, slow internet um, connection, sorry, uh, from my side. Um, so, again, if you sort of, you know, this is how the CCR looks like you've already seen the and uh, how the CCR looks like and if you've already covered the reporting of CO2 emissions. At the bottom of the navigation panel, as uh, Stelius mentioned earlier, uh, for only for Corsia focal points, there is another uh, a sort of, you know, uh, area that you can report, which is a service request. Uh, for state users, because they don't have the authority to do so, it's only, uh, they won't see any of this menu but it will only be visible to the Corsia focal points. Um, so to submit a request, you have to click the service request at the, the bottom of the arrow. Um, and um, so, and then uh, we'll sort of, you'll have to understand what the service request is. So, um, so what is service request? So when you sort of encounter issues regarding CCR, uh, you may be able to find relevant answers from this help section. So you remember the, the uh, question mark at the, at the top? Um, the service request is not about you know, help it, uh, you know, in, in that sense. It's more uh, when you need to resolve something within CCR, for example, if you have like wrongfully changed the year record status into ready, say you are not ready to report, or summit, but you sort of you know made a mistake and uh, and then and then change it to status to ready, so it's only read only for you. So you want to revert it back. Say that happened, um, or say you realize an error after summing the report to ICAO, and then like uh, you want to sort of you know resume um, or change before it is locked. Then uh, you'll be able to use like service request to uh, send send the service request to ICAO for assistance. Um, there are predefined types of requests in the service request, uh, which we will go through uh, in more detail in the following slides. But uh, as mentioned, only CFP uh, Corsia Focal Point can create a service request from a state to minimize any confusions or mix of communication. So um, for you to create a service request, it's pretty much straightforward. It's the same as in other uh, reporting areas. So you can just uh, click add and quick add or full add. And um, there will be, you know, the difference between full add and quick add is just quick add is pop up and then full add you go to a specific um, landing page. There's not much of a difference in terms of the, those two. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, it's, it's, again, it's very simple and, and quite straightforward and similar to other reporting areas. So it's it's not that different from, you know, form C2 reporting, for example. So <clears throat> the difference here is rather on the, the predefined types. So of service request. Um, unlike other reporting areas, you usually you were like clicking a year record. Um, here, when you sort of try to create a service request, you have to select the type and and provide background information uh, at the at the bottom on the description side, so that ICAO can properly sort of guide you and support you and sort of understand the situations uh, that you are in. So there, as mentioned, there are six different types of service requests uh, already predefined uh, for you in the CCR in the current design. So 
first one is data upload request. So say you had issues, a technical difficulty in creating a year record. You are, of course, your focal point. Uh, you should be able to create a year record, but somehow CCR is rejecting it. Um, so you have already compiled all the information that you want to sort of upload in the CFV file. So say um, for 2019 CO2 emissions, um, you have all the information on your hand, but you just cannot import it or something like that. In such a case, you can upload the data and request ICAO to up, up, upload the information on behalf of you because the CCR is having a technical difficulty. So you will um, sort of provide additional comments here and then you will add the uh, here. Uh, yeah. So for data upload requests, you can ask ICAO to upload a year record on behalf of you. Um, just because CCR, uh, CF, course, a focal point is unable to do so. Um, if you choose this specific type of service request, you will have uh, you will have an option to upload the file so that uh, ICAO can do that for you. But um, this service request is only to accommodate a possible error in the system. So we're not expecting um, that states or of course, if focal points not upload the year record. Uh, in a normal situation, there should there should be no error in the system. So of course, the focal point should be able to create and upload the year record on its own, uh, and not expect ICAO to do it for the individual states. Um, obviously, because we cannot accommodate you know hundred all all 193 countries um, uh, unless there's you know again technical issues. So we don't necessarily expect that this function will be used so often, but uh, in case there are some, some errors in the system, we want to accommodate your, the, the situation. So this is the first type of um, service request. The second type is to release data um, with the status ready. So as mentioned earlier, say you have an infer uh, have um, um, suppose that a course of focal point finds error in the data right after the data is submitted to ICAO. So in this case, service requests can be submitted to, um, to, to request a release of such data. So if processed, the data states will change from ready, uh, which was read only for the states, back to in progress for uh, further editing and editing and deleting and things like that. Um, the third one is unlock a submitted data. So say more time has passed since the data has been submitted to ICAO. Um, so ICAO has already validated the data by checking the format correctness and couldn't find any error. Um, so after you know reviewing, uh, ICAO has locked the data. And after this, a course of focal point suddenly realizes that there was an error in the airplane operator's CO2 emission, for example. Um, in this case, Course, a focal point can request a submitted a service request to unlock the uh, submitted data. But if the locked data has already been used for calculations, such as total sector sectoral CO2 emissions or the sector's growth factor, um, as specified in the Annex 16, uh, Volume 4, no adjustment in the calculation will be made um, because of this. So um, the fourth one is, or last two uh, indeed, is to inform or flag a change in status. So one such change could be a Corsia focal point nomination. Again, this is for information purposes only. I kill, will not and cannot take any action on the basis of these uh, this request. Um, the Corsia focal point nomination should not come through CCR, but as a official communication uh, through state letter. So we will, you know, will be thankful for for you to share such an information and giving a heads up but we, cannot uh, we won't take it as an official nomination. Uh, only when a court, uh, state letter has been sent from a designated authority uh, to nominate a, a person for a course of focal point, we can then uh, you know, consider him or her as official course of focal point, uh, not through CCR. This is more for information purposes only. Again, the last one is a change of participation status. So, 
you know, say your state wants to join, um, thankfully, uh, Corsia Volunteer, Corsia, um, the way that you have to do it is not through CCR. You may be able to flag us or sort of give heads up to the Secretariat saying that a new state wants to join, um, voluntarily join Corsia. But the way it has to be done is not through CCR, but again, through a state letter, just like Corsia Focal Point nomination. So for these two with uh, uh, red stars, um, they are for information purposes only. ICAO, again, will not take any action on the basis of these two requests. Official communication through state letter is required for both. The final one is others, so not specified. Say um, there is something, some issues or whatnot that we haven't um, envisioned yet when when the when we de designed the CCR from uh, the beginning, um, you know, you may be able to sort of address that uh, if there there's some some like un unspecified requests. Um, so this is sort of like to capture other instances where you want to sort of communicate with us through CCR. So as mentioned earlier, um, you can add like comments to provide or, or descriptions to provide more background information context for ICAO Secretariat to, to you know, address the issues that you have. And, um, and then, oh yeah, so the status, um, different status options. So just like say year records, so there is in progress, there is complete, ready, locked, and etc. Um, service request is not a reporting, right? So there's different type of status um, options available for service request. So there is new, closed, more information needed, ongoing, and withdrawn. And from a Corsia focal point perspective, there is only two sort of selections that of course your focal point can can choose so it's either new so create a new service request or withdraw that service request because issue has been resolved for example so say you wanted uh you had some errors in uploading a ear record so you were trying to ask ICAO to do it for you and then realize that oh no ccr works fine so then you just withdraw that uh, that request so from a from a user from a course your focal point perspective there's only two options available for ICAO, um, uh, other, for other statuses uh, like closed, more information needed and ongoing can only be changed by ICAO, ICAO super user. So um, when that happens is say, um, you know, <clears throat> a course of focal point creates a new service request and it's not clear for ICAO secretariat. Um, so ICAO secretariat may ICAO super user may change the status to uh, to more information needed, um, then there will be an automated message sent to the Corsia focal point so that uh, that person can, you know, provide more information. So, you know, more background information, context, or the type of error that they are facing and things like that um, can be, you know, sought after uh, through this function. So um, the, the good point of this function is that you will get an automated me message uh, through your you know email account that is associated with the CCR so you you know automatically if they, if there's such a request from the, uh, the IKEA super user is uh, there um, the last sort of uh, status is closed obviously you know it's uh, to show that the the change uh, the work uh, on related to the service request has been resolved um, so the closed service request will be archived for future reference. So as uh, Stelius mentioned in the, the segment one, all the actions done in CCR, including, you know, just viewing and playing around will be recorded in CCR. So, and, and so when such a service request is created, cannot be just deleted, um, it uh, will be closed or withdrawn and archived in the system for, you know, further uh, future reference. So um, I think that's about it. There is, um, that's pretty much, I think it's quite, pretty much straightforward. Um, hopefully there's not too much instances where states, uh, Corsia focal points has to use service request function because, you know, the CCR is pretty much straightforward and there's no uh, errors uh, made. But uh, in case there is any, you know, then uh, please use this function again for, uh, change of nomination for course, course a focal point 
or the voluntary status that has to go through an official communication, not through a uh, service request. Um, yeah, but uh, I think that's uh, that's about it. If you have any questions about the, the service request or any other functions that we have covered uh, throughout today, um, please feel free to leave in the chat or contact us back through email. I'm sorry to sort of go over a bit uh, than, than ex uh, expected and also having the technical difficulties in the middle. Um, but, uh, and, and thank you so much for, for your understanding. So if you have any questions, uh, you can leave it here. If not, I think we are, you know, safe to close. Um, Stelius, if you have any sort of other thoughts, uh, please share. Thank you, Ji Yoon. Um, and again, you know, thanks to all of you for taking the time to participate in this um, uh, in this training session, given the circumstances where, you know, what we're all going through, uh, we try to make it as informative as possible for all of you. Again, um, you know, myself and my colleagues are here to help you. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send us, you know, your questions um, and, uh, you know, we'll try to answer them as, as quickly as possible. We have uh, four more sessions uh, tomorrow, the day after, and then next week. So if you want to do this again, you are welcome to the other sessions as well if you want. Um, but at the same time, we're also recording these sessions. So you will have the opportunity in the future to watch it again. I will send you links to videos so you can uh, watch it again. But any questions, the Secretariat is here to help you. And, uh, you know, we hope that I, I think what we saw today is a bit, you know, overwhelming uh, as a first, um, you know, experience. Uh, to to use the CCR, but I think over time you will appreciate how simple and how useful as a tool is uh, to help you submit information to uh, to ICAO. So with that, I sorry, uh, just just yeah. before you close, sorry, um, sure. I saw the the question from Max. So whether we can delete the data of the exercise on the CCR. Um, so just to show you that you can delete a a you cannot de delete the ear record per se, but uh, you can uh, delete the state sort of uh, pair information. So say, for example, here, Nauru to Canada, uh, you can delete it by clicking the arrow right next to uh, the pencil sign and then delete here. Then um, you'll have some uh, prompt messages, but you can just delete uh, without any issues. Hope that uh, answers your question. Okay, um, the um, the next part of this training will be in person, we hope, and we hope it's going to be, uh, you know, soon. We will announce the dates for the regional seminars once we have a better understanding of what is happening with the COVID-19 and when the travel restrictions will be lifted. So for the uh, regional seminars, we, we're going to go through more functionalities of the CCR. As you saw, there are ways to report airplane operators, verification bodies, and also we're going to have a more thorough, um, uh, thorough uh, training on the CO2 emissions. Uh, but again, you know, more information on this uh, once we have it and we know when uh, the regional seminars will take place. With that, again, thank you very much. Uh, have a good afternoon, everybody. And again, any questions you may have, don't hesitate. We are here for you.